Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Avion blog. So, yeah, I know I haven't been doing a lot of videos of late, but um, I'm trying to make up for that uh, by doing a whole bunch of videos with some interesting content for you guys. So, um, I thought, well, let's take a look at some of the um, sort of software behind some of these things that we work on um, and uh, the actual VoIP device is something completely different. Um, I recently purchased a new VoIP phone for my office, so I thought, well, hey, perfect opportunity, let's take a look at that VoIP phone and let's do a review on it and see how it actually works. But before we go, let's take a look at the device. Sitting on my desk, I'm not going to completely pull it apart and show you guys all the little bits and bobs, I'll do that on the next one I get. This one, I'm just going to show you the device, the basic uh, setup of the device, and then of course we can take a look at the software and the provisioning with my 3CX server so that we can uh, see how it worked out and how simple it really is to get one of these things up and going. So let's get into the video straight away. All right, so here we have the Fanvil X3SP phone. Um, it's a 100 meg phone, voice over IP telephone, with some fantastic functionality. I'm gonna go handheld and show you guys a bit more of a close up of the actual device and the menu layout, etc. Let's get the tripod out of the way here. So here you have the basic of the phone and if you have a look you've got a nice sort of color screen, a nice set of buttons, uh, quite a nice handset. Everything about it is just premium quality and all over a very nice device. Um, I use it like I say personally in my office and it works very well. The actual display actually contains a fair amount of information um, of course you can also go to your histories and take a look through your numbers you can access your directory uh, which is basically on my VoIP server etc there's a lot you can do with these devices um, that you can't do with ordinary phones unless you have a big switchboard of course okay so now we're taking another look at the Fanvil X3S and um, if we get in nice and close over here, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because, uh, quite honestly, they are so similar as far as the menu structure, etc. goes. It has the same sort of function sets, um, you know, for features, etc. The only difference is there's less lines and um, it doesn't have that second LCD screen, obviously. That's pretty much the only difference between the two that uh, warrants being mentioned. So, yeah, these Fanvil devices, very underrated, fantastic phones to have and use. Highly, highly recommended, available from Scoop. Right, so here we have the two phones. Um, on the left over here is the X3SP and then we've got the X4 SP. Now, as you can see, the biggest difference between them one, the X4 LCD is a little bit larger. They're both color LCDs. I'll plug this one up for you guys to see just now. This one's got a dual LCD with some extra function programmable buttons over here. This one only has the baseline buttons. Non-programmable, they're kind of the standard stuff. So let's get in a little bit closer and have a look at the two interfaces. And um, we can see, as you can see, this one has the four buttons below the LCD and then the basic functioning keypads. Where's the X4 model has the same four buttons, the same sort of keypad, but this additional LCD screen over here, uh, which allows you to program speed dials or line extensions, etc. Instead of having the traditional sort of piece of paper in there, which um, gives you guys the, the 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 name of the person you're phoning or whatever the case may be, you actually have a programmable LCD for that, which is absolutely brilliant. I think that's a fantastic feature that Fanball's come out with there. So yeah, that's pretty much the baseline for the interface of the two phones. As for the usability of the phones, they're both very usable. The audio sounds fantastic. But what we're going to do now is we're going to do a few tests on the audio using this phone over here, the X4, um, which is pretty much the same. These two both have the same protocol, so there's no questions there about audio quality. They both have the same audio quality. The biggest difference is functionality on this X4. So I'm going to be using the X4 for the next few days and um, we'll see how it works out and I'll give you guys feedback as we go. But for now I just want to navigate the menu structures of the X4 so that you guys can see pretty much what's available on that phone. Alright, so here we have the baseline LCD 
Um, you can all see what sort of functionality there is on there. Let me just uh, move around to the other side of the camera over here because it is on the desk so it's a little bit awkward but um, you guys get an idea. Here you can see on the functions we've got history which will bring up a list of previously dialed calls etc. You've got directory which is at the moment the directory which downloads from my internal PBX system. Um, you've got Oh geez, in here you've got groups, you've got blacklists, you've got cloud, phone book, LDAP, etc. Then of course you've got the DND, which is the do not disturb function. Now you can change the menu structures there, whatever, but here you've got your, ma your basic menu, you've got status first. If you go into status, it'll give you your mode, your IP address, etc. Um, of what you're currently logged in on. If you go to features, You've got call forwarding, call auto answer, auto hang up, call waiting, do not disturb, basic functionalities, then you've got your settings, basic settings, which is your screen, keyboard settings, ring settings, voice volumes, um, etc. Um, you've got different ringtones. So you could go in here, you could choose a ring type. Like so. And you could basically get different options going um, for different ringtones. You've got ring volume, uh, handset, hands-free volume, headset volume, etc. Voice volume, time, date, greeting words. Uh, if you go into greeting words, you can choose whatever you want the greeting words to be. Language. All this functionality can also be preset on the actual software interface. You've got applications, SMS, MIMO, voice message, ping. Um, again, phone book, call logs, agent, um, it's basically give you a status, reboot system, etc. Okay, so there's your baseline structure for the menus on this phone. It's a very simple phone, but it does do a lot as far as functionality goes. So, yeah, it's a fantastic piece of kit. We are going to head back. Um, into some of the voice call quality etc features of this phone where I'm going to review the quality of the voice calls etc and uh, we'll go from there. Like I say I've been using the X3 SP for a few days now this X4 I only received yesterday so let's see how it goes. As for the secondary panel it basically works by you can have, I don't have any but you've got four or five slides and at the moment I've only got the two programmed up we'll go through and play with that a little bit more in detail as we go through on this review. So all in all, this X4 so far is a very, very impressive VoIP phone. Um, but now we also need to take another close look at the X3 SP features, uh, which are pretty much similar, just lacking on a few like the second LCD, etc. So today we're going to take a look at the setting up of that Fanville phone and my 3CX phone system. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look here. I've got a remote desktop connection to my 2012 server, which runs my 3CX phone system. So we're going to quickly log into that over there, and we're going to take a look at what we have here. As you can see, everything's running quite nicely. Under phones, now this is a new version, because this is the SP or special edition, whatever it is, I don't know. So the firmware is a little bit newer than the one that 3CX has. Uh, built in, but I've updated it and this is as good as it gets. I've auto provisioned it and then I've also made some manual changes to the phone software. So the phone is currently assigned to my extension on my desk, so everything is working pretty well and um, happy days. Now, this is an experimental PBX uh, for a small office environment using the free edition. So we've got one sub trunk. We've got one extension out of five up. Everybody else is kind of left for the day. And we've got no calls in or outs at the moment, so that's all fine. And everything is working well. Forget about this firewall test failed. The system works flawlessly in its current state, so I don't feel any need to change anything. Um, all the forwarding's been done on the Mikrotik routers, etc., and it all works perfectly. Right, so the phone has been provisioned to extension 100. Now, the beautiful thing about 3CX is if I go to that extension, or should I say to the actual phone, I click here and I go to phone UI, it will automatically open a window 
uh, with a phone's UI. Now, just to give you an idea, I've got the phone set on DHCP at the moment. So if you head on over to my Macrotech reader, uh, let me just close this because we don't actually need to access it from this interface. Um, so I'm going to close down this remote desktop connection. And we're going to go and take a look now. In the Macrotech, I've got it set up as uh, a basic um, sort of DHCP client. So go to the DHCP server, you can see it on 108, uh, that one there. So it's all connected up, getting its IP address, etc. Um, if we open up over here, we go to 192.168.2.108, we'll get to the same interface. Now I've pre-logged in so that you guys don't have to worry about watching me enter passwords. You can see we've got it DHCP, um, it's got its IP address, etc. Everything's happening flawlessly. Supplying one is connected to my internal exchange registered. Supplying two, I had connected to an outside um, SIP server, but I've got that inactive at the moment. And um, yeah, you can set up your accounts, etc., your networking. You can pretty much change anything you could as if you were on any sort of normal device, no problems at all. You get your phone book, you've got, ah, oh, geez, everything is here. You can add manually to it or whatever the case may be. And then of course you've got some more advanced settings, etc. Now, as far as these things go, to get them running in the most basic form, on a PBX, you need the IP address of your PBX, the port, support 5060 standard, um, your username, your password on your subserver. If you're using an external service, the same thing applies. Your username is usually your phone number. Give it a name. Authentication name is the phone number password that was given to you by your service provider. In this case, this is a Nexus SIP line. So the SIP.nexus.coza5060 and there you go. That would basically get that active. If I was to activate this, it would connect to the Nexus server and work flawlessly. And that's the basic, basic configuration of getting one of those guys up and running. So. Let's have a look now at the actual phone in use. Um, it's hard to really talk about and show you the phone in use because you kind of actually need to be on the phone. But you are welcome to <laughs> phone in to my office on 031013 South African country code, plus 27. And you can actually hear the phone in use. But um, I'm just going to cover some of the basics of the phone on the desk using the HD video camera just to show you guys the functionality thereof. So let's head on that way and take a look. Like I said, we're talking about the Fanville X3 SP um, VoIP telephone. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the interface, which you log into via a web browser. So here you've got the 192.168.2.109. My phone is getting its IP address from DHCP server on my network. It's registered on my standard LAN network and as you can see I've got my one SIP account registered with it at the moment. That SIP account happens to be my, um, I'll just go to line, my SIP account happens to be my PBX which is my internal server. So as far as adding a, a, um, a service goes, it's a matter of username, display name, authentication name and password. The username and authentication name should be the same password is your authentication password, your SIP server. If you're using somebody like Nexus, for example, it would be sip.nexus.coza, but I'll show you guys how to add one of those just now. Um, this is my internal 3CX PBX, uh, which I've set up here. The support it should be standard 5060. If it's not, you can change it here. And the realm is just the IP address of the server with the ports again. Then you just pretty much click the activate button, apply, and um, your service would be up and running on that line. So if you go here, you can see we've got line one that's currently registered on my SIP, um, or should I say PBX server. You've got, this is the username and password for the phone that you could set up pretty much how you would do it in the router. You've got configurations, you can import, export, you can upgrade firmware here, you can auto provision. And there's some tools over here just for doing like systems log, screenshots, uh, reboot phone, etc. Then under network, it'll give you your current network status. Like as I told you, we're running DHCP, so we're pulling DHCP um, from the primary router. And that'll give us all our information. You can go to advanced. You can play with different um, protocols and uh, VLANs, etc. here if you do do that sort of thing. 
Um, you can run with VPNs if you do that. The lines, like I say, this is your SIP accounts. Now the phone that I'm currently on is an X4S. So it has four SIP lines. I'll show you guys the difference between the X3S and the X3SP and the X4S in a little bit. But uh, for now, I'm logged into the X4S, um, which has kindly been loaned to us from uh, Scoop to do a review on um, and some feedback, basically. And uh, yeah, basically, you can set up four different SIP accounts on this device. So if I was to now go to SIP2, I could then bring in a outside SIP provider, add the details in, and Bob's your uncle, this line would be up. And you've got dialing peers, you've got dial plans, you've got basic settings, your local support, server address, if you're using stun, I'm not. Um, SIP hotspot, uh, then you've got your phone settings over here, you've got your basic features of your phone, you've got your audio settings over here, you've got your MCAST, your date and time, make sure this is right otherwise the phone won't display the right details and a bunch of information here you can manually edit the phone book here if you want to or add new entries into the phone's phone book or you can get them to pull this information from the uh, pbx server which is what i do in my office you got your call logs you got your function keys which you can program up the moment i've got them programmed just the first two which is evion one evion two which is both on sip one trunk that basically allows me to take two simultaneous calls on my one sip trunk um, without any problems at all it works very well um, i'm allowed to take up to eight but um, i never find a need for more than two and of course you've got soft keys that you can program up those function keys i'm going to show you on this x4 it is actually a sub color LCD where you can program different features into these buttons but I'll show you that on the actual device in a few minutes um, as for the X3 and the X4 the X3 doesn't have this functionality here the X4 does but I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison with them shortly I just wanted to show you guys the basic software of the X4 uh, Fanville phone so yeah that's it from the software side uh, let's get back to look at this thing on the bench and i've got it provisioned currently on my pbx so we can actually toy around with it a little bit